Welcome to Black History Matters 2024. This is the fourth installment of an educational series produced by the National Abolition Hall of Fame and Museum. If you're interested in learning more about the program, please head to our YouTube homepage to view our other Black History Month installments, each covering a variety of different topics ranging from the 17th century to the modern day. This year, these short educational videos are meant to provide an introduction to topics important to our understanding of Black American history, but also the larger history of the African diaspora across the Americas and the world. I'm pleased to welcome you to today's episode, Transatlantic Slave Trade, Tracing the Trade Across the Atlantic. The image you see on the screen is one of the more well-known images of the Middle Passage. While it is an image created and used by abolitionists, and therefore its horror is part of the quote-unquote appeal, as abolitionists were attempting to shock their audience into supporting their cause to end slavery. Yet, it is still a vivid example of the inhumanity involved in the Middle Passage, the grueling leg of the transatlantic slave trade that brought millions of Africans to the Americas. I believe it is a useful example and image to keep in mind as we delve into this introduction of the transatlantic slave trade. While we will be mostly speaking of the horrors of the Middle Passage, the harsh treatment Africans had to endure under duress, it's also important to remember that there were also many examples of rebellions on these slave ships as they crossed the Atlantic. This was common enough that it was a very big fear of slave traders who faced mutiny given their small numbers in comparison to the enslaved. This is part of the reason why enslaved people were so restricted in movement by being holed up in the hull of the ship and with shackles. One example of this resistance would be the case of the revolt of the Amistad slave ship, which occurred in 1839 when a group of enslaved Africans, led by Joseph Cinque, seized control of the Spanish vessel off the coast of Cuba. The enslaved Africans, who had been kidnapped from Sierra Leone and sold into slavery, managed to overpower the crew and demand to be returned to their homeland. The subsequent legal battle and international outcry surrounding the Amistad case led to a landmark Supreme Court decision affirming the rights of the enslaved Africans. It ruled for the Africans, which meant that it accepted the argument that they were never citizens of Spain and were illegally taken from Africa, where they lived in a state of freedom and therefore were entitled to that freedom. The case of the Amistad is a very useful example to have it in our mind because it exemplifies the ways that even in the situations of the rest far away from the lands that they knew and the people that they loved, Africans were often still able to exert some form of agency in the form of slave revolts. However, although revolts on slave ships were common enough that we can list several examples, including examples that pervaded in the literature, many of you know the author Herman Melville, who wrote Moby Dick. They actually also wrote a book called Benito Sereno, which imagines a slave revolt aboard a, sla a Spanish slave ship. And it demonstrates how this was seen as a very real threat by those who sought to subjugate and treat Africans as property. In this book, you sort of see the psychology of fear that pervades amongst the white enslavers who are transporting the enslaved people. This was, unfortunately, however, not the lived experience for most of those kidnapped and forced onto the slave trade. Many would undergo the grueling experience without ever obtaining their freedom or having the chance to rebel. Estimates suggest that approximately 12 to 12.8 million enslaved Africans were forcibly transported across the Atlantic Ocean during the Middle Passage between the 16th and 19th centuries. While we have data to tell us about the Middle Passage, for example, a lot of slave ships had uh, logs that, in which the captains would write down the amount of commodities that they were carrying, and in these logs we can see the amount of Africans that were being transported on these ships. We don't really actually have a lot of material in the archives to work with to understand the human experience of the Middle Passage. However, 
A lot of Africans who survived this journey were actually able to write about their experience, and through their stories, we can understand a bit more what it was like for a human being to experience this tragedy. A text titled The Narrative of Louise Aza Aza, a Captured African, tells the experience of a boy brought from Africa to England. In his text, he writes, We were taken in a boat from place to place and sold at every place we stopped at. In about six months, we got to a ship in which we first saw white people. They were French. They bought us. We found here a great many other slaves. There were about 80, including women and children. The Frenchmen sent away all but five of us into another very large ship. We five stayed on board till we got to England, which was about five or six months. The slaves we saw on board the ship were chained together by the legs below deck, so close they could not move. They were flogged very cruelly. I saw one of them flogged till he died. We could not tell what for. They gave them enough to eat. The place they were confined in below deck was so hot and nasty, I could not bear to be in it. A great many of the slaves were ill, but they were not attended to. They used to flog me very bad on board the ship. The captain cut my head very bad one time. The story Louise tells us is often very hard to stomach and to imagine, but unfortunately, it is a very common image that we get in these narratives. Among the more well-known examples of the Middle Passage is that of Alada Equiano. Alada Equiano, who was also known as Gustavus Vaza, was a prominent abolitionist and author born in present-day Nigeria in the late 18th century. His autobiography, The Interesting Narrative of the Life of Alada Equiano, or Gustavus Vaza, the African, written by himself, played a significant role in exposing the horrors of the transatlantic slave trade and advocating for its abolition. He was taken from his home in Africa as a child. He recounts his experience aboard a slave ship in his autobiography, where he writes, The shrieks of the women and the groans of the dying rendered the whole scene of horror almost inconceivable. Equiano's testimony underscores the anguish and despair that permeated the slave ship, where enslaved individuals endured unimaginable horrors and loss. It's horrific to imagine the sounds, smells, and sights that assaulted the eyes of those forced to pass months on board such crowded ships. The last example I'll provide here is that of Venture Smith. He wrote a narrative titled, a narrative of the life and the adventures of Venture, a native of Africa, but resident above 60 years in the United States of America, related by himself. This is an autobiography, which was published originally in 1798. The book tells his life from his capture as a child in West Africa, to his enslavement in the American colonies, to his eventual purchase of his own freedom and the freedom of his family. He provides us with um, a specific image of the cramped quarters and lack of sanitation and the rampant disease that he saw aboard the slave ship. He's, he writes, They frequently died in the passage and their bodies thrown overboard into the sea. This brings into mind the many, many people who were lost at sea, whether it was by demonstrating a form of agency and perhaps committing suicide by jumping overboard the ship, um, instead of uh, awaiting the enslavement and the brutality they would encounter in the Americas, or whether it was that their bodies were disposed into the ocean after a very gruesome death on board. As I like to ask, why is it important for us to remember the life stories of these individuals and even to understand how the memory of the Middle Passage lived on through literature such as Herman Melville's Benito Sereno, which, though be it fiction, is based off of a lot of these narratives that were being published at the time. Well, I think it's important because even though we will never be able to fully uncover the stories or to fully comprehend the experience of the slave trade for those who experienced it, we can at least begin by acknowledging those gaps and silences. While the scale of the system is beyond our capacity to understand, we can at least begin by building on the snippets that we get of the Middle Passage 
from individuals who live through the experience, such as Alara Cuyano, Venture Smith, and Louis Aza Aza. In this way, we do some form of justice for those who we will never hear from, but who nevertheless made that perilous journey against their will and crossed a vast and terrifying ocean into an unknown world. Thank you so much for joining us today for this presentation on Transatlantic Slave Trade, Tracing the Trade Across the Atlantic. On your screen, you will see a link to a Google form. The link is also available in the video description and it will take you to a survey that is a Google form where you can leave feedback about your experience with this video. Your feedback helps us plan for future events and to secure funding. So we really appreciate if you take a few minutes to fill it out. Once again, thank you, and we look forward to seeing you again at our next presentation.